Recently, I have reinstalled Windows, and why exactly did I do that? Well, if we go look at my user folder, now the path to it is different from what it was before. Thing is, before, and you might have noticed this in my videos, my user folder name was Sergey, which is even worse than just being my dead name is the first six characters of my dead name, so it's not even the full one, making it even more ugly to me than it is already. And how exactly do you change a your username on Linux? Ah yes, it's one single command and you're done. How do you do it on Windows? Not as easily. There are some uh, ways to do it with rising complexity and rising dangerousness. Uh, but your easiest way to do it is to create a new local user account. Well, let's actually go and see how you are supposed to do that. You go to accounts, I think, um, then family and other users, and you create a new user. And let's actually just wait for a moment. Uh, I don't have anything. I don't know anything. Uh, and once again, and now you can specify your new username that you want to use. So any other trans girls that are watching my channel, that's how you do it. Uh, but then you're like, wait, hold up. Doesn't that mean that I will have to reinstall everything? Yeah. Yeah, it's just that. Uh, you'll have to reinstall everything that is specifically user-based. So, if we go to C, Program Files, and like Auto Hotkey, well, this will stay, because everything that is in Program Files is uh, on your system overall. But everything that is in your user um, folder that you'll have to reinstall. So something like VS Code, you can see that it's in your user folder. You'll have to reinstall that and many other things. Uh, so I found that it's pretty much the easiest guaranteed way to change your user folder. One thing which is kind of interesting, let's go a level above to users and try to search for uh, this. When we go to the search, now we can actually rename it. Just so you know, we could not uh, do it beforehand. It's really annoying that it doesn't actually specify the full path and I should somehow change it. Um, but yeah, if we go to users and try to rename it, it doesn't give us an option to, but we was just able to through searching. Well, let me actually show you what will happen if we do that. Well, not well, what will happen, but essentially, if we rename it here, then every time that we go to the user folder, it will display both here and here um, your new like username, but when you click at the path to see the actual path, it's still the old one making it completely useless. And the most times that I see my user folder name is uh, by doing some auto hotkey stuff. This is the default path um, for auto hotkey libraries. Uh, you might not be watching this video because you're an auto hotkey user, uh, but overall trying to fix this issue that I'm gonna be talking about. Um, but yeah, that's how I see it most often. And of course, it's going to display the actual path. So yeah, once again. So I could just create a new user profile, um, reinstall everything and be done. But I decided to reinstall Windows because I just wanted to clean reinstall because I had a lot of bullshit that I wanted to also remove. And now my drive is quite free. It was around here, I think. Probably a lot of downloaded One Piece, but that's a different thing. So, okay, sounds easy enough. 
seeing how easy Windows makes it. Uh, you reinstall Windows and then start reinstalling every single thing because I also removed the uh, like user files and so on. Cool, so I reinstall everything, uh, go through the process of configuring stuff, and now we're at a point where I'm trying to make my HK script work uh, in some situations where it doesn't by default. I have a hotkey, Alt-R, that opens the terminal. Well, right now the window already exists, so let's close it and try to open it again by using the hotkey. Well, naturally it works, and it used to work before I reinstalled Windows. Uh, thing is, this is not default behavior. Why? Because if we look at the path, it's in program files and a huge ass path, but look at this specifically. If we try to copy this and run it using auto hotkey, uh, well actually let's look at what happens. I'll press uh, Windows Alt I to run my test script. Uh, well, I guess I fucked up. Essentially, this isn't supposed to work for you. Let me explain why. This is because Windows Apps <coughs> is actually a folder uh, that is restricted by default. If we try to go to Properties and Security, uh, first of all, you don't even have read permissions to this folder much less anything more. If we try to... Uh, you don't even see the actual owner. Well, uh, the owner is trusted installer. So, not administrators, not users, just Windows. Windows fucking owns this folder, not you! Great! Amazing! Zdorova! Uh, essentially, Running this path usually wouldn't um, work for you to open Windows Terminal. And it's a very nice thing to have in a hotkey, right? So, at some point in the past, I did some random magic by changing the permissions for the Windows Apps folder to make it work. And then it worked. Thing is, I didn't document it, so I didn't know how I actually did it. So I decided to redo it again. So I changed the permissions. I just touched the users and the administrators, I think, and I expected that to work. Uh, well, it didn't. First, it broke the terminal. Every time <clears throat> I opened a new window, it just said process exited with some code. And then W, like, that was WSL breaking. And then the actual Windows terminal stopped uh, working as well. Which is like, well, hold up, why did that break? I just changed the permissions. Well, it turns out, Windows Apps is maybe not the only, but one of the folders that you should not, under any circumstance, touch at all. Because I spent the following five hours crying, uh, trying to make it work. Well, turns out, let's go to here, um, and I'll go to the path to not waste your time. Okay, I lied, I don't remember where it is, but the thing is, it doesn't actually matter, because the exe of the Windows Terminal is not only what I just showed you, it's not just Windows Terminal, it's also wt.exe. And if you run this, then it will actually launch. Which is quite incredible. Because instead of using this path, hold up, this path, that you cannot access usually, once again, I do not know why I can, I shouldn't be able to, um, but you can just call wt.exe. And that is now how I call it uh, using auto hotkey instead of using that full path and this is the safe way to get to Windows apps and to run them 
uh, I should probably still search for the path where they exist for maybe different things. Maybe you want something else than Brundos Terminal. Here it is. It's in C, Users, your username, App Data, Local, Microsoft, Windows Apps. And that is going to be left in the description. So aside from Windows Terminal, you also have different other things like the WSL, WinGet. I remember, oh, that's the thing that's basically like a package manager for Windows, which is, I heard, surprisingly better than you think. Uh, Ubuntu, Python, and basically other stuff. So keep this folder in mind because it can actually have useful exes uh, for you to use. However, let's go back to the point that I was making. I'm not making this video because I knew all of this and because everything went smoothly and because, like, I didn't have any issues. No, I did. I was crying for five hours, uh, climbing on walls because fucking Windows apps broke and then couldn't be fixed. I'll tell you more. I reinstalled Windows twice more after breaking Windows apps and after reinstalling Windows, they still were broken somehow and you know what saved me not windows not what uh every fucking tutorial told me to uh do oh like just go to update in security i think right yeah troubleshoot uh additional troubleshooters go to the bottom and windows store apps and by the way i'm sure like this is going to be useful to you uh on some occasion like you should remember this thing uh, I think I've never used it myself but it seems reasonably useful and you would go to here and like oh naturally this will fix it no it fucking doesn't you know what did a random guy on github with a powershell script it's always these people that somehow know the intricacies of the annoyances of windows and know how to go around them and as the person said uh, they themselves had an issue with Windows apps, which is why they created this script. Uh, let me show you an issue that I wrote to them. If you pause and read this, you'll see just how fucking happy I was <laughs> finding this script. Um, now, I... I don't know PowerShell, I didn't look at the code, I didn't really care or understand, I just wanted to my issue fix. So don't just trust me that it's actually all good, maybe there's like a Bitcoin farm currently on my machine without me even knowing it. Uh, I don't know, but it worked amazingly for me. What reinstalling the fucking OS didn't change, this script fixed. So, if currently your Windows apps are broken, you're uh, lying down and crying on the floor, because I did, this is the solution. And once again, it's going to be left in the description. So, I decided to make this video to warn everyone uh, to not go on my path of randomly changing Windows permissions and then spending way too much time trying to fix them because turns out you can just call wt.exe and that will run your terminal and it's all going to be good instead of trying to go to the path uh, that you're seeing right here um, yeah so do not touch windows apps at all it's not worth it guys and another thing that i want to say is that microsoft is fucking transphobic why is that process so fucking complicated to begin with why can't i just fucking change my user folder name and worse yet why do you decide what it's called for me instead of asking me what it should be called i would not be calling it sergey in the first place i would just use my username as you can see, I'm incredibly annoyed by this whole process, but I hope I can help some people with this video to realize how to make it all easier. And if it did help you, press a like, type some comments, maybe have a question or suggestion. 
Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!